our topic for today is third. So um, in thirds, we have a simplification. So we are going to discuss simplifying addition, subtraction, multiplication. Uh, there should be division and some rationalization. Let's start with simplification of thirds. So how do we simplify thirds? For example, I have the square root of 18. If your foundation in multiplication is good, you can just do this method. And this method, all you have to do is to think of two numbers that when you multiply, you will get 18. And make sure that one of it is a perfect square. And that would be 9 by 2. So 9 times 2. This is multiplication. So 9 times 2. And then, square root of 9, which is 3. So this 9 can come outside as 3 because the square root of 9 is 3 leaving the two behind. So that is how you simplify a third. So this is uh, a method if your uh, multiplication is good, if you know all the multiplication table. But if you are having trouble with that, uh, there's another method that I could teach you. Again, we have the same number, square root of 18. So you can do prime factorization. When you see prime factorization, factorize this until you get all the factors that are prime numbers. So you can start with 18, could be 9 times 2, 6 times 3. I can just start with 6 times 3. 3 is already a prime number. So I'm going to continue. 6 could be written as 2 times 3. And those two are prime numbers. So it means 18 could also be written as 2 times 3 times 3. So 2 times 3 times 3. And every time you see two numbers in here, for example, 3 and 3, it is repeated. You can just cross it out and bring it outside as 1. And it will give you the same answer. So that is how you simplify a third. Let's jump on addition and subtraction. Thirds or subtracting thirds, it's pretty much the same thing as variables. Let's just have an example for vari variables. So for example, 2x plus 3x. If you have 2x plus 3x, our answer would be 5x. It's the same thing in third. For example, I have 2 square root of 3 plus 2, I should say 3, square root of 3. This square root of 3, they are just like x's. So when you're adding them, you only add these numbers. You only add the 2 and 3, and that would give us 5. And then root 3 would just be copied. And this is how you add or subtract. In subtraction, it would be the same thing. For example, I have 5 root 5 minus 3 root 5. You only subtract the numbers on the front side, and that would give us 2. And this would just be copied square root of 5. And that is how we add or subtract thirds. Let's just have an example where I have 2 root 3 plus 4 root 2. As you can see, this is root 3 or square root of 3. This is square root of 2. We can't add them, so we will just leave it like this. We can't add them because they have a different third in here. And then, if you have some uh, examples like we have square root of 18 plus 5 root 2. It doesn't mean we can't add them because they are different. Check out this 18 because this 18, it could be simplified based on our previous um, example earlier. Simplification, you can simplify it, which can be written as 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2. Since they have the same third now, you can just add the numbers here. So 3 plus 5 would give us 8 root 2. And that is how you add or subtract a third. Multiplication of thirds. When you're multiplying thirds, all you have to do is to multiply the number outside to the number outside. So in our case here, we have 5 outside, 3 outside, and that would give us 15. And then multiply the 1 inside the square root, so 3 times 6, which would give us 18. And 
check if this number inside the search could be simplified. In our case, we can, sim we can simplify this one because 15 could be written as 9 times 2. And then the square root of 9 is 3, so it can come outside as 3. But the question is, there is an existing number outside, so what should we do? So in this one, all you have to do is to multiply 3 to the number that is already outside. So 3 times 15, that would give you 45. And then leaving the 2 behind. And that is our answer in simplest form. Another example. As you can see here, we are going to multiply 4 to the number outside, but there's no number outside. It doesn't mean this is 0. There's always a 1 in here. So it would be 1 times 4, that would give us 4. And then inside the square root, we have 3 times 10, which is 30. 30, you can't simplify 30 anymore, so you can just leave it like that. We're going to expand search, which is pretty much the same thing as expanding uh, binomials. 3 times 4, and that would give us 12. And then, 3 times negative root 2, which is negative 3 root 2. As you can see over here, since this is a normal number and this is a third number, you just put them side by side. You don't multiply 3 by 2, which is square root of 6. I explain it, uh, already explained it on our multiplication. And then we're going to multiply 2 by 4. So square root of 2 positive times 4, that would give us 4 root 2. And then lastly, we're going to multiply square root of 2 by square root of 2. And positive negative, so negative square root of 4. So this time, we can multiply the 2 and 2 because they are both inside our square root. And then all we have to do now is simplify 1 by 1, so 12. These two can be combined. So negative 3 plus 4 is just like negative 3x plus 4x, which is positive square root of 2. You only subtract 4 minus 3. But the square root stays. There's 1 here, but we don't have to write it. And then square root of 4, which is minus 2. And then you can simplify 12 minus 2. That would give you 10 plus root 2. And that is how we expand a search. Let's have another example. So we're going to expand this one. 5 by 2. That would give us 10. 5 by this one. So 5 times negative 2 to 3. Only multiply the 5 to the 2 outside. So that would be negative 10 root 3. Next, this one over here. Root 3 times 2. I actually put a 1 in here so you don't get confused because there's always 1 in here. So that 1 by 2, that is just 2. So positive 2 root 3. And then this 1 times this, positive times negative. I'll just put the negative sign first. So 1 over here, there's a 1 times the 2. So that would be 2. And then square root of 3 by square root of 3. So when you're multiplying this and that, multiply the outside and the inside square root of 9 simplifying it we will be having 10 minus you can always combine the middle term sometimes if I mean most of the time if these two are the same but if they are different you cannot combine these two unless you can simplify it so negative 10 plus 2 that would be negative 8 root 3 simplifying it square root of 9 is 3 so this number over here could just be written as 3 and that would be 2 or negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. And then you can combine this one and that one. And that would give us 4 minus 8 root 3. And if your teacher says uh, you need to write it in a, in, a, in a factored form, all you have to do is take the common factor here, which is 4. Because this term is divisible by 4, and that term is divisible by 4. So you can take 4 outside, leaving 1 behind, minus... 2 root 3. So this is the factored form, but if, if you don't need the factored form, then you can just have this one. We're going to divide cert. When you're dividing cert, check if you can simplify this number inside, because sometimes uh, you can simplify the fraction, but in this case we can't. Since everything is inside, inside our cert, or square root, it means the numerator is going to be square rooted, 
and the same thing for our denominator. And square root of 25 for the numerator, that would give us 5 over square root of 9, that would give us 3. If you can simplify this, then go on. But if you cannot, just leave it like that. Next, for this one, as you can see, they are separated by different square roots or both the numerator and denominator are square rooted. But we can just put them as one square root inside. So 30 over 8. And then we can simplify 30 and 8 by dividing them both by 2 by 2, which could be written as 15 over 4. And the same thing here, you have to square root both the numerator and denominator. Square root of 15, we can't, so we just leave it as square root of 15. Square root of 4, which is 2. And then, this is our answer. So when you say rationalization of surds, we are not allowed to have a surd on the denominator. So we have to get rid of this. And how are we going to do that? All you have to do is to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number. And what, what is that number? That number would be whatever the single third on the bottom. So you have to multiply this by square root of 3. So you have to multiply it by square root of 3. And you have to do the same thing on the top part. Then multiply 1 times root 3. So this is just a number outside and the number inside. You just put them side by side. It is 1 square root of 3. Or you can just write square root of 3. Over square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is square root of 9. And then square root of 9 is 3. Or we have this property that if you multiply a third by the same third, the answer is just, let's just say, a and a. Square root of a times square root of a is just an a. So, so this one, square root of 3 times square root of 3, is just 3. Or you can do the long way, 3 times 3, 9, square root of 9, which is still 3. And that is how you rationalize it. Okay, let's go to this one. So this one, we have to multiply it by square root of 6 on top and square root of 6 on the bottom. 3 times root 6 is just 3 root 6. And then square root of 6 times square root of 6, which is just 6. And as you can see, 3 and 6 could be simplified by dividing them both by 3. It's just like a fraction. So this will become 1. That would become 2. So our answer here would be square root of 6 over 2. And that's how you rationalize when you have a single third as a denominator. Next, we're going to rationalize when the denominator is not just a single number. In our case over here, we have 2 along with our square root of 2. So how do we rationalize this? So when you're rationalizing this, you have to multiply it by its conjugate. When you say conjugate, it means it's the same number, so that would be 2 and square root of 2, except that the middle sign would be opposite of what you have here. If you have negative here, this would be positive. And you have to do the same thing on the top. And then, we're going to multiply 3 by this, so I'm going to do it on this side. So 3 times 2 minus square root of 2. So 3 times 2, that would give you 6, minus 3 times root 2 is just 3 root 2. So our numerator would be 3, I'm uh, sorry, 6, minus 3 root 2. For our denominator, I'm going to do it on this side. So 2 plus root 2 multiplied by 2 minus root 2. So multiplying this, expanding the bracket, I'll, I'll teach you the short, uh, the long way, and then I'll tell you the shortcut afterwards. So 2 times 2, that would give you 4. And then 2 times root 2, negative, that will give you minus 2 root 2. And then we will multiply root 2 by 2, so that will be positive 2 root 2. And then root 2 times root 2, positive and negative, so minus square root of 4. And then we are going to simplify. And you will notice that the middle terms are always the same. One is negative, the other one is positive, or basically will cancel out each other. And that would just leave us 4 minus, and square root of 4 over here is just 2. 
So basically the denominator is just 2. So you can just put 2 over here. And that is how you rationalize when there are two numbers on our denominator. When we were rationalizing the third, I told you that there's a shortcut because the one that I showed you is the long way. The shortcut is basically just multiply the first number and the first number. So 2 by 2. That would give us 4. And then multiply the last number by its last number. So negative root 2 plus, I mean times, positive root 2. That would give us minus root 4. Simplifying it, that would be 4 minus 2. Square root of 4 is 2. And then simplifying it, that would give us 2. So this is the shortcut. As you can see, I did not multiply the first to the last and then the second to the first over here. Because as you can see earlier, they will cancel out each other. That is why the shortcut do the multiply the first and the last terms, and that would be your answer. But if you want to do the long way, uh, because it, it might confuse you, then do it your way.